My name is Celicia. I am the owner of Kaleidoscope Palace, and welcome home. This is Palace Palavar, uh, where I come on here and I talk to you about things that I'm writing on, things that I'm working on, or things that I just think are interesting to share with you. Um, for this first episode here, I wanted to talk about relationships. Um, I think this has been a very transformative aspect in my life here. And it always brings up uh, just ways in which that I can better myself uh, and show a greater depth of love for myself. Um, so I'm just going to jump right into it. I wrote a little expert here and I'll share my thoughts on it in the, uh, in the later half here. I've noticed a pattern in myself. I seem to be attracting people who like me at first. There is usually no effort on my behalf to obtain their attention, interests, and affections except to inform them of my mutual interest. Right up until they become aware, I may be more versed in life than they had accounted for. It doesn't have to be a singular topic, it's happened for a variety of reasons. My knowledge of spirit, my knowledge of flesh, my knowledge of self. It almost seems like I'm attracting partners who resent me for knowing myself. Maybe even perhaps better than they know themselves. I'm not sure, but I'm struggling to reconcile this for as many reasons as why it happens. As a lover, I am always encouraging my lover to seek themselves. This has, of course, been different in each relationship. Perhaps my lover wants to experiment with their appearance, but is anxious about how they'll be received after. I do my best to affirm them that their evolution is a necessary and beautiful process and that whatever they lose in that process is akin to a snake who has outgrown its current molt or merely the chrysalis waiting to be busted up by their brand new beautiful wings. It's my hope that I'm extended that same level of freedom and support and encouragement and trust in my own processes. This hasn't yet been done in a way consistent enough for me to justify preserving these relationships. But I'm looking forward to the day when that isn't the case. I'm also noticing that when these issues occur in my life, they coincide with instances where it is vital for me to speak up for myself. I can't help but draw a correlation. The universe can't bring me what I haven't shown up as. While these fleeting counterparts have their own individual works of self-acceptance, reflection, and understanding, I have work pertaining to speaking up. Currently, I believe I'm showing up in a way that is communicating that I hold some discomfort around the relationship I have with myself, which isn't true for my reality, but because I haven't formed a habit of expressing my external discomfort with others, the external world thinks the perceived discomfort is with me and not with them. I've been skewing the view by doing this. The result has been the universe brings me people who I trigger by being myself and thus the wheel continues to turn, pushing me into a conflict of speaking my mind and expelling from my space whatever doesn't see or honor me in my truth. I'm not sure if this resonates for anyone else, but with all that's going on in the world, it feels important to address how my chakra, my throat chakra, can be used to empower me. Um, I think there are a few things in here that I would like to expand on. Um, I'll start with um, the universe can't um, bring me something that I haven't shown up as yet. Uh, and the perception around this discomfort with myself, right? Because one could then argue like, well, isn't there a discomfort with yourself? Or why aren't you speaking up about these things? And I think the answer for it is that I, and I, I know a lot of feminized people who do this, uh, it's almost innate to place the comfort of others above my own needs. And this is something that I'm actively working to unlearn. Of course, I don't think feminized people are the only people who have suffered with this, but I do think that that expectation is more prevalent on us than any other demographic of people. Um, I also think that... Um, sorry, I'm drawing a blank here. I'm only human. Um... But I, I do think that that is a really important part. And I think that's come up for me, not just in relationships, but in, in a lot of ways. The, just the power of getting comfortable with expressing, like, I didn't like that. And um, I think part of the discomfort is, is that you don't want to be the person that causes conflict. But 
sometimes conflict is necessary sometimes conflict is good sometimes conflict is healthy and transformative and it doesn't always have to result in harm um I've gone through the process, right, of that discomfort around, you know, the people who were used to you um, just going along with things and not speaking your mind, right, and the tantrums that they'll throw as a result. Um, They're very upset because, hey, you've done this thing for me for this long and it's never been a problem now. Who are you talking to that's making you change your mind or what's going on with you? Something's wrong with you because you're not working the way that you used to work for me. Um, Change is hard. Change is always uncomfortable. Change is always um, going to require shift uh, in perspective, in environment, uh, in anything but that's how things grow, right? Like, we can't just stagnate. We can't just stay in one place and and never change. Like, that, I mean, I would say, like, only dead things do that, but even that's not true, right? Like, even a dead thing will begin to decompose and and ultimately change. Like, change is so very, very inevitable. Um, And I want to bring in more experiences that feel more aligned with my internal world of like who I know myself to be right because and I think for a really long time that part was throwing me and was really really uncomfortable for me because in my internal world I know who I am and then I go outside and people react to me like I'm not who I am and I'm looking like am I losing it (laughs) and it's not necessarily that that anything was wrong it's just how Like, you teach your environment how to engage with you. Um, And sometimes that's not a cute kumbaya moment. Like, sometimes the environment is like, what do you mean we don't have access to touch you whenever we feel like it? What do you mean? What do you mean I can't just call you and just say whatever I want to say? What do you mean? What do you mean I don't have access to you anyway in shape in which I feel like having access to you? That doesn't make sense. And so you have to have that learning process. Um, for the parents out there, like, isn't that, doesn't this sound familiar? Where, you know, you have to set those boundaries. You have to teach this new person, like, hey, these things aren't okay. Hey, this isn't what we do. And it's uncomfortable for both people involved in any instance that this happens. But again... Um, I I genuinely do believe that that is how you grow and how you change. And I want the universe to bring me experiences and people that more closely reflect uh, the love that I hold within myself. And that first step is mastering the discomfort of stating my needs and stating my expectations. Um, Let me know if any of that resonates for you. Thank you so much for joining us for this first episode, and I look forward to speaking to you all soon.